everybody, this is Noreen from Joy of Cards and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and welcome to my YouTube channel. Yay! For more of my Stampin' Up! card videos, please make sure you click the subscribe button and the little bell and you'll be the first to be notified when my videos release. And today's card is new. This is in the moment. It's from the Stampin' Up! January to June catalog. That's 2022 if you can believe it. And they're going to do a celebration again. But here's a sneak peek of that stamp set. And actually, I have an order coming in that I'm going to also do a video. It's either the one right before this or the one right after it. So you can look. If you go to joyocards.com and uh, subscribe, you can see all my videos in one place. But here is the new stamp set. And this was a challenge for me. I'm not, you know... It's not my thing to do big stamps and then kind of have it. Anyway, I, I struggled a little bit with it, but here I've got this cool little card and she's sitting under her valance in the window. And there's also these two other stamps that you can sink in and, and do some really cool stuff with. So the only other stamp set we're gonna be using is Garden Birdhouses, which I put inside. Lately, I haven't been putting sentiments inside my cards because a lot of times when you're going through and you need a birthday card or whatever, and you're going through your cards and you look inside, it's like, oh no, that won't fit. So I've been kind of leaving them blank and just decorating them. So let's go ahead and start. First thing I want you to do is cut out all your pieces. I usually don't have you do that, but we're gonna do it that, that way this time. So your card base is gonna be five and a half by four and a quarter in pale papaya. And then the inside of the card, you're gonna use Misty Moonlight and that's five and a quarter by four. Hand Pen, which is five by 3.75. And Shimmery White, five, four and a half by three and a quarter. Now, all my dimensions and everything I've used is on the description of my video. So just um, click the little down or arrow or the show more and it'll pull everything down. So you don't have to sit there and frantically write out measurements because there's a lot of measurements here. So the front of the card, we're gonna be using Misty Moonlight, five and a half by four and a quarter. We're gonna be doing hand pen, five and a quarter by four, Misty Moonlight, four and a half by 3.75, and Shimmery White, four and a quarter by three and a half. Now the valance is going to, you're gonna cut a piece of pansy petals, and you're gonna cut this 1.75 by six. So this is on the back of Pansy's petals. And then you're gonna do the drapes and the drapes are 0.75 by three. So you're gonna get two of those. So go to the description of my video, get all the measurements. So now let's start. So let's start with the easy part first and that's the inside. So let's do our stamping and I'm gonna be using garden uh, bird houses. And we're gonna be using these two little flower plants here, the grass and uh, the bird right here. So I've got them all blocked up. And then I'm gonna use um, garden green and I'm gonna use a Stampin' Spot. This actually came from a paper pumpkin. A really good reason to get a paper pumpkin is you get these little Stampin' Spots. And they're great for things that are really small. And then I'm gonna be using Misty Moonlight. So the first thing I'm gonna do is grab one of those flowers. I'm gonna ink it up and I'm gonna stamp it on the Stampin' pad here with my paper, because these are clear stamps. And I put it a little above the bottom here just because I think it looks a little better when you do it that way. And then the other clump of flowers, because they're going the other direction, and I'm gonna put them right here. And then I'm gonna grab one of those birds, and I'm just gonna put the bird right here as well, and that's all in Misty Moonlight. And now I'm gonna take the grass, and the grass is right here, and I'm gonna use my uh, Garden Green, and I'm going to do stamp, stamp, stamp. So it's not, you know, you're kind of stamping off. So stamp, stamp, stamp. Stamp, stamp, stamp. And just go all the way across. And by the way, if you want the new January to June Stampin' Up! catalog, if you put your name and address in the comments of my video, I'll put you on my list. Now, they do cost me money, so if you already have a demonstrator, don't get one from me, or if you don't wanna order anything, um, it, they cost me like five bucks a piece to send them out in mail, so, so don't do that. So there's that part of the stamping. 
Now I'm going to do a little bit of coloring. I'm just going to color in the bird here with dark pool party. And he, there's the bird. And then I'm just going to take the dark pale papaya and then also just fill in the flowers right here like that. Now just the easy part. So you just uh, put them all together and put them in the middle of the card and we'll have the inside done. So like I said, if you want the new mini catalog, uh, just put a comment in video and uh, just leave your name and address and I'll send it out. If it's after November 27th, because it has to be here by the 27th because I do a big mailer uh, directly with Stampin' Up. If it's after that, that's fine. You can just send me, uh, just put your notes in, or your address in the notes and I'll get it later on, but it just won't mail out as quick. So now let's go to the front. Let's do the easy stuff first. So we're gonna go ahead and snail on that large piece of Misty Moonlight. Like I said, all the dimensions and everything I've used for the card are in the description of my video, so that's good. And then we're gonna take our hand pinned and just put that on in the middle like so. And then let's leave this one and we'll get to that in a moment. Now we're going to go ahead and start stamping the girl. So grab from in the moment when you get it, because this is coming up in January, grab the girl right here and we're gonna grab some memento. And this is that piece of the shimmery white that goes on the front, which is four and a quarter by three and a half. And we're gonna take our memento and we're gonna stamp her up really good. And we're gonna put her toward the bottom in the middle, of course, and just leave a little gap so you have enough for the sentiment. So I'm going to stamp her right here, just like that. And then you're not done yet. So I want you to take the memento again and ink it up real good. And I'm going to take a piece of copy paper, crummy copy paper. Don't use good quality paper because we're going to be doing some masking. And if you use anything that's thicker, you'll cause more of a shadow. And I'm going to stamp this like right here on the copy paper because what I want to do is and this is my fussy cut pieces I want to leave some room here so I'm covering up the rest of here but also I'm going to take this paper and I'm going to grab a ruler and this is the Stampin' Write in black now all the Stampin' Writes these are to write on uh, stamps and actually there's every color um, available in all the inks if you get the set. And I know like the set is expensive, but you can buy just the black Stampin' Write. It's in the catalog. And these are like four bucks. If you're gonna get anything, get this, it's four bucks. And I want you to take a ruler and what we're gonna do, it, if, if you notice that my mask, the window pane is, is longer. So we're gonna take these out a little bit and just grab the really nice pointy edge of the uh, Stampin' Write, and you're going to line this up, and you're going to go from the corner and just make these go out a little more. So I did it on all the panes, and then on the bottom, of course, here too, I brought them out as well. So just take them and make them longer, and then you're gonna fussy cut with scissors for the most part, and when you get to the intricate parts, because there's under her knees, and under her leg here, behind your back. What you're gonna have to do is take an X-Acto knife and a cutting mat and cut those little pieces out because you wanna be able to sponge all those places. So go ahead and prepare your mask and um, come back. So here's my mask and obviously I've done the cards, so it's all inked up here. Um, and you wanna take the Teal Tombow. This is like the perfect tape for masking because it won't really stick. It'll stick, but won't really stick. Stick, but anyway. So I want you to go ahead and snail up all the little pieces. And then once you do that, make sure there's no like webbing in between. So when you're um, sponging, it, it uh, makes that little spot there. So just make sure all those are out of the way. And then take your piece and you're going to exactly match her up. I mean like exactly. So take a few minutes and fiddle around and get her all lined up. 
The first thing we're going to do is make this sunset behind her. And we're all masked up here. I just put a piece of scratch paper just in case. Now we're going to be coloring the outside of these in um, mint macaroon. So the edges here and the bottom here. So uh, just be aware that when you're blending to kind of keep it within that area. So here's my Daffodil Delight. And then tell you the truth, I started this out with So Saffron and I thought, let's try it with Daffodil Delight. So I'm going to go ahead and do Daffodil Delight first, keeping in mind not to color too far to the side for that mint macaroon. And I'm going to get this in real good. Now I'm using the blending brushes. So you tap and tap and swirl and get this a nice bright color. And then I'm going to use Magenta Madness, do the same thing, tap off. Now we don't have to worry about the top because that's not going to be affected. And I'm going to go in here and go up and swirl in. You definitely want to go to the edge of the pane here because um, we are including that. So make sure you got it far enough over. I'm going to put a little bit more of Magenta Madness in here and go over your Daffodil Delight, kind of blend them together. I'm going to go a little darker. And that should do it. Now for the big reveal, let's take off the mask and look at that, cool. So now we're gonna make the green edge here. Now it's like, well, why didn't you just use the mint macaroon paper because we have to have this white. So anyway, let's grab another blending brush and do the mint macaroon and go in, tap off, and I'm gonna do the sides and the bottom. So swirl in and let's get a nice, mint macaroon side. As I'm doing the mint macaroon, take a post-it note and put it on your fingers. And I want you to put it right over the ledge of the window. Now, be careful that you're not like sponging over the post-it note on the sides because it'll make a line. So be careful of that. So I'm going to line this up with the edge of the the windowsill here and then go over like this. Try not to go over the side of that post-it note, just the top and then you can move it over a little bit. So you make sure you don't do that. And then when you go to the other side, do the same thing, kind of pull it over so you don't do that line because that may or may not show. You don't want to take that risk. And we've got fingers on the post-it note also, so you're not touching your newly inked piece and put little fingerprint marks on it. I hate when that happens, so. And then continue with your mint. Now my mint macaroon is really dry because I like never use it. It's one of the colors that I don't use a lot, but when I need it, I need it. So I just have to kind of push on it pretty good to get all the ink. Okay, and that's that part. Now we need to extend these window panes again, just like we did on our mask. So take that Stampin' Write and a ruler. And the best way to do this is, um, I'm gonna have to stick my head in the camera, sorry, is line it up on the line going across. Go in the corner of the window pane. Don't start in the middle of that line. So line it up perfectly so your tip goes in there and then go out like that and then while it's still lined up don't move it then go to the other side and take this out too try not to go too far because you're going to have that like quarter of an inch on the side here so do it to all the lines and then we'll be back now you've extended all these lines, these three on the top, the two on the side, and the windowsill here. Don't worry about above or foot 
but just take these out a little bit as well. So make sure you use the Stampin' Right and this, and this is, this will match the memento. So you're all good. Now let's put on the drapes. Now the drapes go on first before the balance and the drapes, these pieces are cut. And like I said, this is all in the description of my video. This is 0.75, so three fourths of an inch by three. Now, once you cut these pieces, then I want you to grab your trimmer. And this is a Stampin' Up! trimmer, so I really like it. it it's the bomb. Um, by the way, you can place orders with me. I have a direct site, noreenbrungart.stampinup.net. So you can place orders for me. You can also click on the links in the uh, video description and they'll go right to my site, so which is good, and the uh, site description's on there as well. So with the Stampin' Up! trimmer, you have the cutter and the score. So you want the score, put, so put the, the big bad uh, cutter on the other side so you don't accidentally you know, cut it. So I'm gonna take this little, little tiny, teeny piece and I'm gonna line this up and we're gonna score this at a quarter of an inch. So line this up like so. And I'm going to put this down and score, 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 score. Put a nice little score on there. And then I'm going to pull this over to a half an inch. And then close this up and score, 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 score. So it looks like drapes. And then go ahead and do it to the other piece, which I've already done. So you got two of these. Now take your drapes and there's a right and a wrong side. So you can tell which side is wrong and tape the wrong side. And then the reason why we didn't put the sentiment on yet is because we don't know where the drapes are gonna fall. Um, do I have this completely centered? Of which I do not. But <laughs> go ahead and put these down right to the end of the paper here and go up. So I'm lining this up just like that. Now I've left this much space on this side. Let's see how much space, let's take that same amount of space and do it to the other side just like that. Now the part that drove me nuts because I actually had to figure out the formula of how big I needed this paper. So we're going to take a piece of the pansy petals, this is what's on the back, and we're going to cut this 1.75 by 6, which I've already done. Now half of 6 here is 3 obviously. So here is three. Okay, so we're right in the middle. So we're going to do one side and the other side. And what we're going to do is we're going to score. So I'm making these pleats right here. So we're going to take this and we're going to have it at three, right? And then we're going to move it all the way to three and a half. And I'm going to take my score, take that ugly cutter and put it to the end. Bad, bad cutter. So you don't want to accidentally cut it. So I'm going to score here at three and a half. Now give it a good score because we have to fold these drapes and this fold in between is only an eighth of an inch. So once we score at three and a half, I'm going to move it over to the left an eighth of an inch and an eighth of an inch is three and five eighths and give it also a nice good score. Now not too hard because if you do it too hard, you'll, um, you'll ruin the paper, but um, give it a good score. And then I'm going to move it all the way to four and an eighth and give it a good score. Now remember all of the dimensions and everything's in the description of my video. Just go down to it. You can grab everything. You can grab all the dimensions, all the score lines, all the products I've used. You can click on the links on the products, go right to my Stampin' Up! store, help a lady out. Anyway, so this is, I forgot where we were. This is four and an eighth. And now we're going to go an eighth over to the left more and we are at four and a quarter. So score, 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 score. And now we're gonna go to four and seven eighths. And then we're gonna take this and score, score, score. And then we're going to go a quarter, uh, an eighth of an inch, which is five. And we're gonna score, 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 score. And then we're going to go to five and a half and score, 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 score. And then an eighth of an inch over, which is five and five eighths and score, score, score. So now we've done half of the balance. Now we're going to turn this over 
to this side and we're going to go to three and a half. So I'm at three and a half. I had, it, I had to turn it over there. So we're doing the other side. So three and a half. And then I'm going to go an eighth of an inch, which is three and five eighths. And score, 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 score. And then we're going to go to four and an eighth. And score, 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 score. And then add an eighth of an inch, which is four and a quarter. Score, 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 score. And then we are going to four and seven eighths. And we're going to score, 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 score. And then we're going to go to, then go to five and score, score, score. And then we're going to go to five and a half and score, 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 score. And an eighth of an inch. And that's five and five eighths and score, score, score. So it's going to look like this. Now we're not quite done. Now we're going to have to find this middle piece because we're going to be cutting. So what I did here is a half, half of one and three fourths is seven eighths. So go to seven eighths on your cutter. And then on the Stampin' Up! cutter, you can go to three because half of six is three. So one, two, three. So the middle is like right here. And you're going to take your pencil and you're going to mark that. Then you're going to go to the end, the last score here, and you're going to mark that here on this side and the last score here on that side. Now you're going to take your cutter, so put the score away, and you're going to make a V. And that will look like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to put those little pencil marks in the groove of the cutter here. So put the one on the bottom first and you can see it through the, the thing here and you line up the second dot. So I've got this dot lined up and that one and I'm going to take my cutter and as I approach the dot, now I'm really going to put my head in the camera so you'll be see my big old red head. Um, just kind of go up a little slowly, a little slowly, check, check, check it, check it, don't go too far and a little tiny bit more and a little tiny bit more and up to that mark so we've cut that now i want to turn this around and do the same thing put the pencil mark here and here in the groove where the blade is and line that up just like so and take it all the way up and then look at it look at it i'm going to put my head in the camera look at it look at it look at it till you get it right up there and you should be able to pull that out so this is what you're left with now grab your pencil again and erase those little pencil marks here that you've got and then grab your bone folder and what we're going to do so the middle is right here and to one side of it you're going to make a mountain fold so the uh, dots are on the outside so make sure they're lined up here and it's folded over and you're going to take your bone folder and score it. Now be careful not to score it too, too hard because you can rip the paper. Now that eighth of an inch, because basically it's a half an inch, an eighth of an inch, a half, eighth, half, eighth, half, eighth, all the way over. So the eighth of an inch, we're gonna do a valley. So a mountain and then a valley. And we're gonna take our score and every time we fold it, we're gonna score that puppy good. So Here's a mountain again. So mountain, valley, mountain, valley, mountain, valley. And make sure they're lined up here too on the top before you score it down. And score that down good. And I would do both sides. Like I said, don't do it too hard. You'll rip it. And then valley. And what we're gonna end up having is that pleated valance, which is really cool. And then mountain. and then valley and it's really really tiny this is why you really kind of scored it nice and good because if you don't score it good and those uh score lines are too light you're not going to be able to get that little eighth of an inch fold because that's that's small <laughs> that's really small so mountain and valley like this so that's one side. Now go to the other side and do the same exact thing. So mountain, make sure they're lined up here at the top. 
because they can like um, get a little bit on an angle. So make sure they line up. So mountain and then that eighth of an inch valley and go all the way down. So I'm going to do that. Like I said, don't, don't be afraid to place an order with me. <laughs> it's uh, here's my Stampin' Up! direct uh, address, or you can go to the description of my video and click on the link and go right to my Stampin' Up! site. Don't forget if you want the uh, new mini catalog, the January to June, if you can put your name and address in the comments before November 27th, that's when my mailer goes out. Now the thing about the mailer is, if you're on the mailer direct from a demonstrator, you get it faster. So um, if you miss the November 27th cutoff, you can still get one from me. It just won't come out with that first bunch that are going out to uh, everyone. And then of course, if you already have a demonstrator, you can go ahead and call them and, and uh, they'll get you one out. And I have a lot of demonstrator subscribers. Hello, sub uh, demonstrators, how are you? Case my stuff, that's what the internet's for. Um, so go ahead and get it through them because they do cost money. Uh, every demonstrator pays. If you're going to get the uh, mini catalog and the celebration catalog, probably costs the demonstrator like around $5. So if you're not going to place an order, you could just, you know, probably best not to. So I went ahead and I did all the folds. Now I'm going to give it another fold again here crossed just like that. So it makes that nice little pleated balance. Before we put this on, let's color the girl. So I'm going to take um, the light and darks of most of these colors and I'm going to go to the pale papaya first and do her shirt. Now I'm using the light one initially and then I'm going to use the dark one and make all the little highlights. So I'm going to color in her shirt first. Now I'm going to take my dark pale papaya and just do like all the wrinkle lines here. Also right here is the other side of her shirt. So I'm going to color that whole part dark and maybe down the back here like so just like that. And then we're going to take the light and dark Highland Heather. I'm going to start with the light and I'm going to color in her pants. I'm going to outline it first just in case I go crazy and go out of the line. So I'll outline her first and then color in the middle. Now my dark Highland Heather, just like the uh, shirt, I'm just going to go in and do all the crease lines. And then the leg that's tucked behind, I'm going to fill that completely in as well. I'm going to color her hair in with the light Daffodil Delight. Just her hair and there's a barrette there, so careful. And then I'm going to do the highlight in the dark daffodil. Like that. And then I'm going to take the dark pool party and do her barrette. And then take the light pool party and start doing the pillows. So all the pillows in light first. Now you've done the light. Now let's go ahead and just do the little wrinkles and everything and the part of the pillow that's tucked behind in the dark, just like that. Okay. And the last thing I believe we need to do is color in the uh, coffee mug. So I'm going to just use the dark daffodil delight and do her coffee mug like that. Now we're going to go ahead and pull, put on the balance first before we do the sentiment because if we want to adjust this we can still pull these all up and I would suggest using uh, tape rather than glue because you can adjust it without making that you know tape splotch. So to tape the balance I want you to fold it all the way down and while you're at it you might as well give it a nice little crisp score again without ripping it. Oh, that'd be terrible if you ripped it at the last minute. It'd be like, no. And then go ahead and tape them down, but don't tape the middle. Skip the middle and tape them down all the way to the side. And now it's time for adjustment. So if any adjustments need to be done, it's now. And the curtains are longer than they need to, just so we can adjust it. So 
I want to put this above her head and all the way up to the top of the paper like that and right over to that curtain now if, like I said if this is too wide right here which it actually isn't once you push it down it'll be fine but if you need to move the curtain over at all or if you see it's um, crooked like this one is right here you can just move it like that just like so and just while I was cutting the the tape here a little bit tape I'm old um, I went ahead and gave it another score here just to make it nice and flat and crisp and lay down now we can put our sentiment because we know where the middle is now so I'm going to go ahead and take my misty moonlight and then the sentiment is from in the moment as well it's right up here you're in my thoughts and let's put that puppy in the middle so I'm going to stick my head in the camera yes uh, my big head and put that right here it's kind of scary because it's like the last thing before you put it all together it's like oh I hope I don't mess that up and then woohoo the fun part so we had that extra piece of misty moonlight that we didn't use and that's because it's the backing for the shimmery white and we're going to put it on in the middle like so and then I'm going to score here on the card make sure it's opening the correct way because that also stinks when you when you do that I think we've all done that and put that on like that so that's the card please like and subscribe subscribe subscribe, subscribe. and that'll do it for me thanks a lot bye